Most of us associate bacteria and viruses with illness, but research finds some of these microorganisms can be beneficial to our health. Dr. Nidhi Kumar is on call this morning to tell us about what scientists call the gut microbiome. I'm fascinated by this. Tell us what you mean and how it's helpful. Right. So our bodies are made up of cells, but we are actually made up of more bacterial cells than human cells. And humans have evolved to live with this bacteria so much so that we need it for our survival at this point. Now, these bacteria mainly exist in our intestines or our gut, and we refer to them as the gut microbiome. Trillions of bacteria from thousands of different species are hanging out in our guts, and they're not just sitting there passively, they play an important role in our health. Yeah, so how does it affect the body? Well, it has a major influence on our immune system, our ability to digest foods, um, multiple metabolic processes in our body. However, overgrowth of certain bacteria can have negative effects on the body, can make it difficult for us to lose weight, uh, increase our chances of cardiovascular disease, have a hand in tumor development. And the most interesting thing is the gut-brain connection. Our gut microbiome is intimately tied to our mental health. There was a recent study at the end of last year from University of Alabama that found a connection between an imbalance in gut microbiome and the development of Parkinson's disease. And there have been tons of studies looking at imbalanced gut microbiome and depression. So from neurodegenerative disease to mood, this bacteria has a say. A huge impact. So let's talk about what can lead to that imbalance or the imperfect microbiome. Okay, so making the wrong lifestyle choices. Chronic stress, heavy alcohol use, smoking causes inflammation in the gut. Processed foods, artificial sweeteners, these fake foods have additives, and those are damaging to the good bacteria in the gut. And then finally, overuse of antibiotics. So antibiotics are great in the appropriate setting, but when you use an antibiotic, you're killing off your good bacteria. So you don't want to use one unless it's 100% necessary. All right, how about we get to that uh, promoting the healthy microbiome? I mean, what can we do? Okay, so making the right choices. They've studied that people who exercise have healthy gut microbiomes. And that's moderate exercise, 150 minutes a week of exercise. Fiber, fiber, and more fiber. Fiber feeds the good bacteria. 25 grams a day for women, 35 grams a day for men. And then probiotics. Now, probiotics can be helpful in a certain setting. These are ingestible microorganisms. They come in capsule form. I want to say they're not FDA approved, so you want to find a good brand. Look for at least 1 billion colony forming units. Strains like Lactobacillus, Bifidiobacterium, Saccharomyces. These are the strains that have been studied the most. Um, but also look for probiotics in your foods. And those are your fermented foods. So yogurt, miso, um, kombucha, sauerkraut. But hold the hot dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, darn it. Uh, so, so there are ways we can get it just in the food. And so that might be a good way to go, too, at least a start. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Well, we really appreciate you coming in and talking Thank to us. You. Who knew it was so important to our lives? Dr. Nidhi Kumar, thanks so much for being with us this morning.